You're going to be late. Mike gave his best friend an accusing look as they both entered the Green Monster's beloved car. It has already passed seven, and Sully should have been at Randall's place five minutes ago. A lot of things had taken more time for Sully than he had predicted that afternoon. He was picking up groceries, and it had been easy, though. As, but the Blue Monster had faced a little bit of dem dilemma when it came to whatever he should try to buy Randall a gift or not. He knew it was considered calmly pointless to bring a little something for the host, and thought that it probably should. But then he came to the question on what on earth he should buy. He didn't want to bring Randall flowers. Sully feared that all sorts of flowers would be interpreted of the decoration of love. And since he didn't know that Randall considered him, he had decided that flowers weren't the best way to go. Eventually, he had ended up buying Randall a box of chocolate, but he still didn't know if he had the courage to give it to him. When the shopping was done, Sully had spent the last impressing amount of time of getting ready. Mike couldn't believe that it could possibly take him so long and so that he didn't have time to pick up out the outfit, but Sully had taken his time. Carelessly, ignoring his best friend's sights and, rolling, and eye rolling, and Mike was beginning to wonder if the monster's plan was to arrive fashionably late or something. However, they had managed to make it to the car, and the green monster stepped on the gas pedal before they headed out to one to reach the closed door. Mike wanted to get his friends to Randall's apartment as quickly as possible, to Sully's own good. You know, Sul, I think you're the most important matter for Randall is the fact that you're actually coming, which is not a daughter into your wearing ring. Mike then knew Sully was nervous, and he did try his best to cheer him up. One of his ways to do that was teasing. Unless you're planning to get close tonight. What? Sully said, startled when stared back at Mike. What is that supposed to mean? So we're not Sully! We're not there yet. Mike's teasing and grin vanished, and his face then grinned up with more compassionate expression. You're not there yet. I know, Sully. Sully gave Mike a shy smile in return. He was happy that he has such an understanding best friend. The apartment was spotless. Randall had spent the entire day cleaning it, and it was a good help from Miss Lorenzo, and was very pleased with the result. He was a bit of a neat freak on his normal basis, but today was even more important to him to make the place make sure it looked perfect. He was expecting a guest for dinner. The purple monster was used to having company by now. Sullivan and or Gladys had been coming over every day for the last couple days. But today was the first time, as far as he could remember, he actually invited someone over, a friend. Randall was still amazed by the fact that he actually had a friend. A friend that was confident enough to ask over, and he could hardly believe it. He felt happy and terrified at the same time. Happy to have someone over for dinner, and terrified of pushing him away, Randall wasn't sure if that would be doing any good for others, and had problems with expressing emotions. What had he overheard Sophie tell Sullivan a couple weeks ago had been painfully true. He was afraid of caring, afraid of bonding, and afraid of losing. However, Sullivan had surprised him. Randall had openly hated for him for years, but those feelings were all gone now and replaced with he didn't really know. All he knew was that he knew the guy had forgotten how to know that someone very special, someone who he truly cared for, someone who had completely ignored Randall's loud protesters and frets and refused to leave him alone with his dark thoughts, someone who had probably saved his life. Yes, Sullivan was special, special indeed. Randall had the big monster on his mind as he walked towards the kitchen into the living room and jumped down on the sight of his own reflection on the window. His scales were in a deep shade of pink, a color that sometimes he finds himself in when he's thinking about someone that he cared for. However, it didn't happen for a while though. Due to obvious reasons, he quickly changed back to his normal color and he could feel his heart beating rising as he walked closer to the window. For a moment, Randall stared up in his reflection of his own face, until a movement in the parking lot was outside that caused him to change focus. A familiar big blue monster had caught the eyes, and a little shiver went up his spine. His guest was here. Although Randall had been expecting a visitor, he knocked on the door and took him by surprise. Why did Sullivan bother knocking? He never did that. He normally just unlocked himself with the key that he borrowed from Sophie. The lizard thought to himself that as he walked through the front door, he wondered on how he was going to greet his guest. 
It all suddenly seemed to be much more formal than he had been to open the door himself and let someone in. Don't you have Sophie's key? Randall swung the door open to his own choice of words that feel like strangling himself. I mean, you normally enter. Why don't you me- I mean, hello. Hi, Sully couldn't help but chuckle from Randall's dull's greeting. He still found the lizard's way to be kind of awkwardly cute. I have the key, but I thought I'd knock this time since this is the first time you invited me. Oh, okay. Randall stepped in so aside and let Sully in. Th thank you. For what? For coming. Without further warning, Randall moved closer to Sullivan and put all four of his arms around him. He unexpectedly hugged was only a few seconds and then left the blue monster startled. He didn't even get a chance to hug back as Randall loosened his grip and withdraw himself from the other. Some odd tension rose between the two of them in the hall, and the lizard looked very embarrassed, and Sully was happy to see him covered in thick fur. It had been a different color since on his face from the glowing. I, I brought you groceries. Thanks. Randall took a hold of the bag and handed him by Sullivan and then hurried towards the kitchen. His face was like burning up, lit burning up. He had just given Sullivan a hug and wasn't quite sure what he had came over him. He just felt so happy to see him. And before he knew it, he was wrapped around the other monster's hand, other monster's chest. Randall could quickly feel himself blushing again, just by the thinking about it. I need help with, and need help with anything? Sullivan followed him into the kitchen and looked everywhere else to see the lizard's eyes. After seeing your skills in the kitchen, Sullivan, I don't think so. Randall hissed. He tried his best to keep his attitude and not not make a fool of himself again. He started unloading the groceries from the shopping bag. But on the other hand, I think it would do you good if you learn how things are actually done in the kitchen. So pick up an apron and get over here. Sully quickly grabbed a hold of an apron that he found on the hook on the door and placed next to Randall, who was somewhat already looking for a cooking lesson. Okay then, he said with anticipation. What are you making today? Lasagna. Randall returned with a smile, although it was a hint of tease. Real lasagna. Randall hadn't been cooking for a while, but he clearly hadn't forgotten his kitchen skills. He fired, he fried up the meat and made the sauce and prepared the dessert. And once all of that was confident, Sully, on the other hand, was a little less confident. He had been guaranteed a job of slicing the vegetables and tried his best to keep up with Randall's speed. But there was no doubt on having four arms with a big advantage in the kitchen. And the blue one fell behind from the very smart start. When Sully noticed that the host was getting a little impatient, he tried to increase his speed with slicing, caused Randall to put down the tools and yell at him. Damn it, Sullivan! You're you're gonna chop up your own fingers off! I don't want to keep you waiting. You'll have to keep me waiting in the emergency room if you continue like this. Now, let me show you. Randall lined up the, next to Sullivan and took a hold of his hands and sliced the tomato together with him. See? This is how it's done, you big dork. The purple monster gave the other one a teasing grin before he returned to the sauce. Sully missed the feeling of slender hands around his own, but he took a hold of another tomato with his own one courage and sliced it the same way Randall had showed him. It looked a little longer, but the result was somewhat the same. You're improving, Randall smirked as he was from where he was standing. So you are, what do you mean? Is it possible to hang out now? Yeah, I haven't been enjoying my company for the last couple weeks. Randall again gave Sully a nice, nice another grin and a smart, friendly punch as he picked up the sliced tomatoes and threw them into the sauce. The few days here weren't exactly cheerful, you know, Sully re replied to Randall's teasing, but quickly switched it to a more serious tone. But it's good, good getting to know you. You too, the scaly monster smiled as he tasted the sauce. And this is perfect, by the way. Have you been thinking about the job offer? Sully lay down with his spoon, and he had just eaten a couple pieces of his dessert, which had been the perfect end of the meal. Actually, I have, Randall admitted, and I think, I think, I want to give it a go. Sully's face broke into a smile. Great, when do you want to start? Not sure yet. I don't really know how to be funny, so I guess I'll need to practice first, but I want to try it. Sully could hardly believe the good news. Randall was going to return to Monsters, Inc.? That could be the final sign of his recovery, either that or the final sign of his change. We'll have to find a day for you to come with a visit me in the factory. No problem, and I'll prepare the other employees so you don't have to worry about them. These were really great news for Randall. Oh, so it's about time someone else sit down in this place and wins of courage, you know? 
Well, they only shared a smile, and Sully treated himself to another piece of pie. A bit later, when they finished with the clearing on the table and loading the dishwasher, the two friends went outside for a walk. They, they could both use a stretcher on their legs after the big meal, and they also enjoyed walking together. They had been lots of walks during the first two weeks of their friendship. Today, they chose to walk through the park. It was all dark and quiet. There were no other monsters out, and it didn't come to a surprise. It was Saturday night, and most of the other citizens of Monstropolis were at home with their families or out on the town with friends. A gentle snowfall was the only a company on Sully and Randall's stroll, and for a long time, they didn't say anything. They just enjoyed the silence surrounding them, and this place of nature was the middle of the city. Until Sully remembered some news that Randall, he hadn't shared with him yet. I, I told Sophie you were back yesterday. You did? What did she say? Randall stopped walking and his eyes grew wide with excitement. He had been waiting for Sully to tell him about his sister. But no, the deed was done. He wasn't sure if he was ready. She said a lot and she cried. But I actually think she was happy. At least she thanked me. Does she want to see me? The scaly one, one hardly dared to ask. The dreaded answer, but he had to know. Sure, Sully noticed and the relief on the monster's eyes and the sound of this ice stable. They even carried on with the good news. I told her we'd pick a day to get together with her. Are you coming with me to see her? Do you want me to? Randall turned his head away from Sullivan again, admitting that he wanted company, even though it was still hard for him. Yeah, I still want you there. Uh, then I'll join you. I'll make sure Sophie won't mind. Just promise me that you won't ar arrange a meeting at with dinner at your place. You still have a lot to learn about the kitchen before I can trust you with preparing and cooking the meal. For free or for, if Wazowski's joining us. Or perhaps just any place with him by children, through his table with rats. Randall smirked at his own joke and Sully had to chuckle too. You know, Randall, it's a good thing you've recovered because you're getting a little too confident now. It's all your fault, you know. I blame yours. The snowball that hit Randall on the left cheek, and the lizard took completely by surprise, and the other monster laughed. You need to cool down a little, Randall. Oh, you think so? Randall grinned and replied. Be careful, Sullivan. You know what you're getting yourself into, here. If you were without another word, Randall turned invisible. Sully was still laughing, and was playful side with the other monster that he had been before. He heard Randall's voice somewhere, but he couldn't figure it out where exactly it came from. A snowball hit with someone you can see, someone who got four hands. And with is it the thing that you could ever do, you big troll. Smack! Two snowballs hit Sully at the back of his head, and the blue monster fumbled about, a little shocked from the attack, and tried to catch the little monster lizard. When he realized that he was nowhere behind him, he scooped up some more snow from the ground and ready to make another snowball. But then there was he was down on his own knees. The two other snows missed balls missed him, and once again at the back of his head, Sully quickly got up and turned around, and relieved to see the other one's face. Okay, now you're dead. He then threw the snowball in the direction where he caught fought Randall was located, but it didn't hit anything. He heard the other monster laughed at his left side, and he turned his head. He had noticed fingerprint footprints being made in the snow, apparently by themselves. First, Sully pretended to not see him. Then he began laughing, pretending he was looking for Randall. Then suddenly, without warning, he quickly reached out towards the towards the space above the prince and grabbed a hold of what appears to be air. But it turns out it was a living body. Gotcha! The living, being invisible creature tried pulling it up a fight, but it wasn't easy to hold on to. Their arms and legs were everywhere, and the tail didn't make it easier. All of Randall's movements were eventually caused by Sully to lose his balance and fell into the, to the ground. With the invisible lizard in his arms, Randall reappeared as the snow covered hit the grass, and Sully was pleased to see that his face was boiling over with laughter and shouted at curses. Screw you! Nice colors! Randall then looked at the glimpse of his own body and noticed that he was taken by Sullivan's colors. As he changed back to normal shades of purple immediately, but the smile still remained on his face. Do you give? Sully's arms were still wrapped around the smaller monster, and he showed no signs of letting go. Yeah, give... Of course, Randall sighed and allowed his body to relax. He felt tired from the fight, and right now, it felt amazing to relax in Sullivan's arms like this. Sullivan made him feel safe. When Randall had been crying last week, he had the feeling the blue monster's arms around him, and it had been enough to make him feel better, and he remembered the touch, and the softness of the fur, and... 
softness of the fur, and the warmth of the days to come. He had actually been missing it. He actually had been missing. He had been missing it. Also, he found himself longing for Sullivan to touch him again. He didn't quite understand with his own desires, though. He just forgot he was because he was starving and came to contact with others. He had been drawn towards what the first monster had let him them be kind for years, or was this something else? Randall didn't know. All he knows is that he want, didn't want this moment to end. He leaned closer to Sullivan's chest and could feel the bigger monster's heartbeats and noticed that they were being a little faster than he considered normal. But yet again, so we're on his own. Randall? The sound of Sullivan's voice was caused the lizard to look up and meet his face in his eyes. They reflected on their own questioning. He glanced them up as he felt like they were for hours, and he could feel himself being drawn towards the heart gain speed, and with his breath, breathing went up. He felt the other monster's hands on their back, and their upper hands close around incredibly soft blue fur. The sound of the phone ringing had never sounded so loud before. Both the monsters jumped and fumbled around, and eventually met back to their feet. And after the fourth or fifth ring, Sully was calm enough to answer. Hello? Hello? Who is this? The voice on the lever line was unfamiliar, and Sully wanted to throw the phone phone onto the pond, but it was someone who dialed the wrong number and could possibly have murdered them. Is This is James P. Sullivan. Uh, who is this? I'm calling from the Upper Monstropolis Hospital. Are you the relative of Sophie Boggs? We're friends. The little monster on the line felt silent for a while, and Sully felt a chill run up his spine, and he looked over at Randall, who glanced with a questioning expression. I'm afraid there's been an accident. The voice then started to speak again. But Sully knew there was a wish, and he, there was one way he could keep from doing so. I think you should come down to the hospital as soon as possible. For the second time that evening, Sully shivered. It had been the first time he had done since cuddle up with Randall in the snow. And this time, it was far more unpleasant.